right, I'm going to do another video here on uh, Stephen Anderson again, um, denying what the Bible says, um, basically that God brings Israel back to land. If you're a Bible believer, you understand that that's part of God fulfilling Bible prophecy, the Lord bringing Israel back into their homeland, but not according to Stephen Anderson. It's the Illuminati that brought Israel back. Let's watch this. If that hasn't changed, then why would God have brought them back? And if God's not the one that brought them back, then someone else brought them back. Because it's amazing. I mean, if people say, well, wait a minute, it's a miracle. Now, I wouldn't say it's a miracle, but you know what I would say? It's, it's a phenomenon. I would say it is unparalleled in human history. It is definitely very remarkable. But it's not a miracle because when you have multi-billions of dollars, you can make a lot of miracles happen. When you have the money of the Rothschilds, when you have the money of the Jewish bankers of the world, you can make things happen. You can make something happen that looks like a miracle. But it's not a miracle. It's just you have the money to buy the politicians and you have the money to buy the tickets and bring all the Jews back to Palestine because you got the money to do it. So this vile little devil laughs and it just says, oh, you can make a lot of miracles happen. It's not a miracle of God, but it's a miracle. You can make a lot of miracles happen if you're a Rothschild or a Jewish banker or something like this. <laughs> and he's always doing this little impy laugh. <laughs> Mocking the word of God. Ah, oh, he's just so disgusting. But let me just show you here this thing that like the all these Illuminati Jewish Banker, international, CI or a CFR, guys, trilateral commission, all this. They can do things and the Lord's up there just going, oh man, oh, what do I do about this? Let me show you what the Bible actually teaches. The book of Zephaniah here, chapter 3, verse 8. Therefore wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey, for my determination is to gather the nations that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them mine indignation, even all my fierce anger, for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. Who is behind the New World Order? Um, that would be God. You say, oh no, see, uh, you know, it's the... International bankers and in the in the United Nations and things like this. Uh, no, God controls them, and God has a purpose set in motion. You see, He made a covenant with a certain people, and that certain people, for that covenant to be fulfilled, they'd have to come back to their land and actually see the miracles. You know why God didn't just say to the to the nation of Israel back when they were in bondage under Egypt. He could have just said, Egyptians died, drop dead. Okay, Israelites, come on out of there. He didn't do that. He left them there and he showed them sign after sign after sign after sign. And you read through that thing sometimes and you look and you say, God hard, hardened Pharaoh's heart. He hardened his heart. He hardened his heart. He hardened it over and over and over again. You say, I don't understand that. What's going on there? Very simple. God hardened Pharaoh's heart so that he could show the children of Israel my power here, his power. He showed him through signs and wonders. And ironically, if you study what Moses did, what God did through Moses there, you'll see that a lot of those same exact signs are repeated in the time of Jacob's trouble. And isn't it also interesting that God calls Jerusalem, Sodom, and Egypt in the time of Jacob's trouble? How about that? How about uh, Proverbs chapter 21? Verse 1, another verse which Anderson obviously does not know. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. You know what all these Illuminati bankers and all these big shots are? Pawns in God's game. God just takes their heart and he says, do this, put your money there, buy that, do this, say this, go here, go there. See, the Bible says that Jesus Christ, it says that by Him all things consist. Everything is plugged into God. He is the source of life. Stephen Anderson tries to cover that up. I wonder why. It's not, it's not a God, you know, it's not a miracle of God that the, the, it's, it's, it's miraculous, but it's not a supernatural miracle. It's just 
these rich Rothschilds and other Illuminati, you know, Jews, you know, it's, all, it's always the Jews, you know, never the Catholics. You know, it's the Romans helped Christians in the first century, according to Stephen Anderson. It's just the evil Jews that are always the enemies of Christians, you know. Sure. But, you know, just, again, Anderson's showing his wicked, disgusting Vatican ties and philosophy. Let's watch two other videos here quick. Israel moment number 23. It was all done through the, the, the funds of Jewish bankers, and it was also done through the satanic institution known as the United Nations. See, the United Nations is the embryonic world government that one day is going to be, you know, the, the seat of a global government that's going to install the Antichrist. So if we look at the forces that were behind Israel becoming a nation, it was a lot of wicked people. It was a lot of uh, satanic, uh, you know, ultra wealthy Jewish bankers. It was a lot of uh, uh, people in the United Nations and other, you know, wicked organizations like that. It wasn't of the Lord. And the proof that it's not of the Lord is that they never turned to Jesus. So therefore, they're not even worshiping the Lord. So why would the Lord bring them back? It doesn't make any sense. And so to say that, you know, God is blessing Israel by bringing them back in the land, no, they're under God's wrath. They're not under his blessing. Oh, Anderson, you're such a moron. My word. Okay, let's, let's go with Stephen Anderson philosophy for a minute here. If Israel was truly God's nation, God would have brought them back because they believed in Jesus Christ then what would be the point of the time of Jacob's trouble? Um, no, God brought them back in unbelief. He brings them back, and then he confirms the word, the New Testament. See, he had to confirm the word in the Old Testament, in the book of Exodus. Had to confirm that he was their God. That's why he showed all the signs and wonders through Moses, you know. And it's going to happen again in the time of Jacob's trouble. Why? Because they're holy and saved people. No, because they're wicked. The Jews are a very, very wicked people right now. They are in sin. There's all kinds of sin over there. There's, that's why it's called Sodom and Egypt by the Lord. I mean, Anderson sets up this system that doesn't even work. It's not even logical. You know? I mean... If, if the Jews were truly God's people, they should be saved people, and, and that would mean that God brought them back, and then they'd be saved, and then it'd be, you know, then what's the purpose of the time of Jacob's trouble? The guy's insane. Let's watch one other video. And so the so called nation of Israel is a fraud. Started in 1948 by the Satanic United Nations, by the House of Rothschild, that wasn't God that put them in the Promised Land, because God did not allow them to enter the Promised Land because of unbelief, and they are still in unbelief to this day. Okay, hold on there. Um, it was a Satanic power that put them in. You realize what he's calling God? According to Anderson, God is Satanic, because God is the one that brought him back. Absolutely. Totally. And I'm going to be showing that in the future here. Uh, the next uh, Anderson, Stephen Anderson and his lies video, I'm going to show you that proof that it was God that brought them back in unbelief. I'm going to show you that. But according to Anderson, it's the Illuminati. And God's up there going, oh no, the Illuminati did something. What am I supposed to do? See, these guys want you to believe that there's this evil, horrible, satanic organization, the Illuminati, and God's just, you know, biting his fingernails going, oh, what are they going to do next? I can't do anything. I'm powerless to stop them. Weird God that uh, Anderson worships. Let's continue. And they were not put there by God. They were put there by Satan because that will be the seat of the Antichrist government. So don't be fooled by this talk about Israel and the Jews being God's chosen people. Christians are God's chosen people. That's why the word elect, every time it's used in the New Testament, is referring to the believers, not referring to the nation of Israel. Because in Christ there is neither Jew nor Gentile. Okay. Now, this is another one of the famous blunders that Stephen Anderson makes. He says that every reference to the elect in the Bible is always a reference to saved Christians. Okay, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 10. 
Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sakes, that they, who's the they? The elect, may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Um, hold on a second there. I endure all things for the elect so that they might get saved, is what Paul's saying here. Um, I thought every reference in the Bible was a, you know, to the elect. I thought it was all references to save people, Christians. No, no, in point of fact, many of the references are to Jews. And oftentimes, like right here, those Jews are lost. They're not even saved. But they're called elect. Stephen Anderson doesn't want you to know that. Stephen Anderson wants to turn you against the nation of Israel so that, you'll, so that you'll stand by as the Catholics come in to slaughter them. So that uh, some people out there that aren't truly saved, they won't get saved and they won't defend the nation of Israel and they'll miss the rapture and they'll go into the time of Jacob's trouble and they'll help turn in the Jewish people. I'm sure Anderson will be there. I'm sure Anderson is going to be one of those. You better get away from Stephen Anderson. I'm warning you.